want to emphasize on a very, 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 uh, folks, it, it, if it's a common scripture, uh, if it's a good scripture, they're all good. But if it's a scripture that really uh, tries to lift people up or tries to bring God glory, so many times have we quoted. I've quoted scriptures before in the past that I had never even read it before. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I'd heard somebody else say. Mm -hmm. And uh, but anyways, I'm glad for the word of God. Brother John wrote this epistle, and I want to read the first four verses. He said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Zach, we could stop there and preach. He said, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Verse 4, where I'll take my text by the help of the Lord. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Read it again. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. That's a pretty good saying, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good scripture. But James, Kenner, I put it to the text. I proved it time and time again that God is greater. Amen. There's been times of as my mind went over the past few weeks and the past few months, and it seems like not only in our church congregation, but all over the land, people's spirits are low and people's excitement is down. But I still stand and say tonight, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, Amen. speaking of the church, speaking of the Christians, speaking of the born again. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Now, I don't plan on taking a lot of time tonight, but you know how it goes. But my mind went over, and I want you to turn over there this week sometime when you've got some time to sit down and study. I want you to remember to go over into 2 Chronicles chapter 31 and 32. But tonight, if I was to uh, uh, dwell on it just a little bit, I'll take a little bit out of uh, chapter 32 of 2 Chronicles. And the Bible teaches us that Assyria had a king by the name of Sennacherib. And Sennacherib was a, uh, he served false gods along with all of his other people. And the word of God said that, and history records that when Sennacherib was king of Assyria, that man, he defeated Nation after nation after nation after nation. He didn't go into a battle unless he came out victorious. And man, people today is saying, where is this powerful God that you've been preaching so much about? I'm telling you what, he's still on the throne. 
He still knows what's going on, and he still has everything under control. Amen. I want you to pray for me tonight. This is not a shouting message. So, after Sennacherib had defeated all of these other nations, the Bible teaches us in 30, chapter 32 of 2 Chronicles that Sennacherib set his eyes upon Judah. Mm -hmm. And the Word of God teaches us that he, along with his army, mm -hmm. came to Judah. <clears throat> and Hezekiah being the king there. And he took notice to it. And the Word of God knew that, uh, teaches us that Hezekiah knew that Sennacherib came for no other reason than to fight with Jerusalem. And the Bible teaches us that Hezekiah took counsel. He got his people together in the midst of a battle, in the midst of a war, before it even began, the Bible said that Hezekiah took charge. Now I want you to pay close attention. This is not a real familiar scripture. And you pray for me that the Lord would help me remember what I've read and what I know. I ask him for nothing else but what I've studied and what I've read over the past. But the Word of God says that Hezekiah took counsel and Shinnachirim had came to Judah and he came to take over Jerusalem. And the Word of God said that Hezekiah, as I just told you, yeah. he noticed this. And man, he took action. The Word of God teaches us that Hezekiah began to rebuild the walls. And he began to uh, get the people together. And he began to encourage them. And the Word of God teaches his sister Belinda that after Sennacherib came to Jerusalem, oh, Hezekiah knew one big tool that he needed. But I tell you what, we can go, I forget how long, how many days or how many weeks or how many months this body can go without food. But there's only a short number of days that a human body can go without water. And the Word of God said, now help me, church. The Word of God said that Hezekiah took counsel with all of his men. And he said, boys, I believe the first tool to use is to cut off the water and cut off the source of water. And so they did so. That's not my thought tonight. My thought is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that's what Hezekiah tried to instill in his people. Yeah. He began to counsel them. He began to instruct them. He said, now listen, I know you're worried. I know you're afraid. I know you're upset. He said, I know you've watched the evening news. I know what, you, what you've read in the Gazette about all of Sinatirib's victories, how that he's taken every nation that he attempted to take. And I know you're shaking right now in your shoes, but I remind you that greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. Now listen, Hezekiah told these people, Bob, he said, Sennacherib is coming to us with the arm of the flesh. Praise the Lord forever. That's all he's got to offer is the arm of the flesh. And the word of God says that Hezekiah told his people, he said, we'll stand and we'll only stand in the name of the Lord. Hezekiah said, Sennacherib and all of his people is coming. He said, all they got to work with is the flesh and their training 
and their wisdom. But Hezekiah could have used the scripture that John used in that epistle uh, of chapter 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the Bible said that Hezekiah began to pre prepare for battle. Mm -hmm. He sure did. Now, a lot of times we think that, man, if I'm saved and people's talk, people's preach, man, you, you, you're saved and, and you don't have to do nothing and you don't have to work and, and, and you just lay back and enjoy the ride. Not so. Not so. There's work to do. There's a battle to be fought. And, uh, and man, I don't care what people say. I, I've told a story for a long time that happened up where I was raised. There was a man on the grocery store up there. The Word of God said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away, and behold, all things become new. Some people take that above and beyond. This man owed this, this other man a great, uh, a pretty good size debt at the grocery store. And I know that Bob's been through it many times. And, uh, but anyways, he, he, he wouldn't pay his bill. And, and, and so one night, one night at a wake at a certain person, he seen this individual and, uh, he got him off to the side and didn't embarrass him. He said, now, Hey, uh, when do you think you're going to be able to pay me some on your bill? He said, I've got to live too. That gentleman looked that man straight in the eye. He said, have you not heard? And the gentleman that owned the store said, no, what are you talking about? He got, he said, I got saved. And the Lord forgive me of my past. <laughs> so therefore, you and your family's got to start. Well, it don't work like that, does it? Even though some people may believe it, and some people, listen, Hezekiah told his people, said, a senator is coming with the arm of flesh, but the Lord's going to fight our battle. But you know what Hezekiah done? The word of God said that he got his people to work, and, and they uh, built the walls up, they prepared, they made weapons of war, and they did their part. The word of God said, teaches us having done all to stand. Now I can't quote it. Having done all to stand, stand there with. Anyway, the devil's trying to fight me tonight, but he's not going to win because I got a bunch of people praying for me. Well, the word of God said, goes on there in chapter 2 of Chronicles. And the word of God teaches us that Sennacherib sent some of his people, some of his servants, to go out and try to entice the people of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, Hezekiah's people. And they went out and they began to tell these people, said, now listen, I want to remind you, in case some of you don't know, there's never been a God. I know that Hezekiah's telling you to trust in his God. I know that Hezekiah is teaching you that his God, that your God, will fight your battle and take him care of it. But Sennacherib's people told the people of Jerusalem, said, now, we want you to know, in case you don't know, they ain't been a God that we've stood up against that we haven't tore down. They haven't been a God that came against us, uh -huh. all the gods of all the nations before. We destroyed not only the people, but we destroyed their gods. Said they told the people day after day and time after time, said, listen, said this God and this leader, your king Hezekiah, they're, 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 he, he has no idea what he's talking about. I know he's had other opposition. I know he's had other enemies. But he's never met anybody like us before. And he's never dealt with anybody like us before. Hezekiah, after he had rebuilt the walls, the word of God teaches us there that he stationed people upon the walls and said the people of, 
of Assyria that came with Sennacherib said they began to stand on the ground and they began to holler out yeah. at, at all the people that was on the wall that Hezekiah had stationed there and tell them that they was fools and they was believing a lie. And the word of God teaches us that time went on and said one right after another, said that Hezekiah has lied to you, mm -hmm. said look what was done all across the nations and all the other people. But he said no other gods could stop us. The God of Hezekiah is no different. Mm -hmm. And mighty, you know what happened? I know that Hezekiah had built the walls and Jack he had made new weapons and new shields. But the word of God said that he went and got the prophet Isaiah, yeah. his old friend Isaiah, and the word of God said that he went over yeah. and him and Isaiah began to pray. Boy, how good does it do, Brother Timmy, when you're down and out, Amen. when you don't know what you're going to do? Amen. Isn't it good? Praise the Lord. If you don't have the victory yourself, Man, you can go get a good brother in the Lord. Amen. How many times have you done that? Man, I've done it a lot of times. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad I don't call somebody, Timmy, that hits and misses. I don't call somebody that don't live what they say they are. But, Brian, I call somebody that walks the walk and talks the talk. I said, I need prayer, and I need to go to prayer and listen to me. The Bible don't give a whole lot of information there in 32 about why Hezekiah got Isaiah, but I would imagine like I do so many times, Jack, all of these people was running to him and saying, hey, listen, we just heard we're hearing new stuff every day. Man, did you hear what uh, uh, Senator and, and the uh, Assyrian people done to this nation and that nation? And Brother Timmy, I believe Hezekiah could see the faint look on his people's faces uh, and saw the weariness. Uh, but man, he had enough sense uh, to call on the prophet Isaiah. And he said, Brother Isaiah, I believe it's about time for us to go pray and seek God Almighty. Listen to me, church. If you'll trust the Lord, you won't have to lift an arm. You won't have to lift a hand. But he'll go to battle for you. And the word of God teaches us, Zach, while Hezekiah and Isaiah were praying yeah. that God spent, sent an angel. Uh -huh. The word of God don't say God sent angels, but the word of God says that God sent an angel and slew all the great men of Assyria. Praise the Lord forevermore. Our Hezekiah did not have to face a sin of Cherub. Why, when he looked and he saw what the mighty hand of God had done, the word of God said in 2 Chronicles chapter 2 that Sennacherib went back to his hometown, shame face. The word of God don't mention a time that Hezekiah and Sennacherib butted heads. It don't mention a time, Zach, that they had a sword drawn on anybody. But my word is tonight, church, do what you know to do, and that's pray and seek God's face. And when you can't pray, get somebody to pray for you and to lift you up and strengthen you and give you courage. And therefore, God will fight our battles for greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. Amen. 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 I'll show him exactly. Sit a chair up. Said, I'll show him just exactly what a real man is. 
Well, the word of God said after God sent the angel and slew all the mighty men, men of valor, said that Shinnacherib returned back to his homeland shamefaced. You know what happened when he stood in there? One of these days, listen to me, people is going to stand in judgment. They're going to be so mad and they're going to be so aggravated because they believe the lie of the devil and will be damned forever. Listen to me. I believe one of the biggest noises that will be going on in hell is people trying to curse and people trying to get revenge on the devil because he lied to them and he defeated them. Listen, Sennacherib had went throughout Assyria and all the other nations, listen, had, had persuaded people. They was people thought that Sennacherib was indispensable. He was un, in, undestructible. I'm telling you what, there was some thought, if you study Bible history, some thought that Sennacherib, king of Syria, was the greatest man ever was. But listen to me. Once and he stood up before those other gods. But my God, listen, who the scripture says shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. My God, which the scripture records, never leave you, never forsake you. Listen to me. My God, listen, that is a prayer answering God. Had seen a cheer him, Zach, had never run up against a God like that. And Sennacherib had never run up against men that saw that it was important to pray to give the battle to the Lord. That's where we get the picture. That's where we get win the battles is when we trust God and put our trust in him. Amen. But the word of God said that Sennacherib returned shamefaced. His army that saw that, that, that their leader, that their king, the people of Assyria, saw that their king was no greater than any other man. That he had no power over every God on earth when he had everybody convinced that way. The people that followed him and supported him finally saw that he was only a man, a fleshly man, when he had exalted himself to be something great. You say, what happened to him, preacher? Did all of these people, did his, did his armies and all of those people that was left, did they come to destroy him? Did they come and kill him? No. Who was it then? One of Hezekiah's people. No, preacher. No, that's not the one. The Word of God teaches us there in chapter 32 <coughs> that those that came forth from his own bowels, meaning his own children, when he returned home after making such a fool of himself, his own children killed him and slew him because he was a mockery unto them. The word of God says greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. Amen. Church, we're not defeated. There's no other power. There's no other place of refuge. There's no other place of hope, Timmy. There's no other place of security. And I'm telling you, hold on to Jesus. Brother Tony, practically every time I talk to him, I'll say, Tony, how you doing? Brother Tony says, I'm still on the rock. Amen. Sometimes we can't stand, can we, Tony? Sometimes we can't see it. But the important thing is, if we can't do nothing but lay on the rock, stay on the rock. Amen. Because this rock is Jesus. 
Church, he's never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. Of all the people, of all the opposition that has come up against his people, he has always taken care of them. Amen. He's always made a way, Timmy, where there seemeth to be no way. Get a song ready, if you would, please. I've thought so many times about this. I don't know. I, 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 I've not found too much to where Hezekiah had a whole lot of training in anything but following God. And, and, and he was lifted up later, but he repented. Man, he... You know, people, people really come around. If we're not careful, buddy, that pats on the backs will blow our head up and get us in trouble where we can't get into the throne room of God. The doorway's not wide enough. Hezekiah, when he knew the enemy was at the door, as I said earlier, he said, well, I'll do everything I know to do. He said, we'll make some spears and we'll make some swords. I'll encourage my people. He said, but the most important thing, Brother Kinky, he said, the most important thing I'm going to do is call Brother Isaiah have him come down and pray. I don't know how long they prayed. I don't even know what they said. But I do know one one thing after they went to prayer. God sent help. Amen. God fought the battle. He made a way. Amen. Never, never. Hezekiah might have had some of his men to come and say, but I'll tell you what, here's the strategy you need to use on a, on a set of chariot. Some of them might have said, you need to get up on that wall. Call him over and talk to you. And you've done shut the water off and they're all thirsty and you get him over the wall. We'll drop a big old rock on his head. Bob, someone might have said, I'll tell you what, you get him close enough, I'm pretty good with this throwing this jab. Here's a guy said, No, I'm gonna go talk to the Lord. He said, I'm gonna take somebody with me there. He said, I can imagine of all that was going on, of all the fright that these people were put in and tried to. Uh, the people of Assyria tried to convince all of the people of Jerusalem that Hezekiah had lied to them. And he tried to tell them, put your trust in the Lord. But God fought the battle. Greater, greater is he. Listen now. Read it again. He's committed to us, Brother Jerry. Hey, preacher, I ain't got him in me. There ever was a time people need to get God in them. It's a day in our religion. Mom and I was talking yesterday. She was telling me, she said, some people don't fear God no more, do they? I said, no, Mom, they don't fear God. She said, the fear is gone. I said, that's signs of the time. Signs of the time. People don't fear nothing. I'm telling you what, he's still going to get the last say. And his people is going to be victorious. You can go through all 66 books of the Bible. You'll never find the time that the children of God didn't come out on top. Amen. Man went through a battle, 
They went through hard times, but in the end, they was the victors. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. We're so thankful for all that you've done. So thankful that you've taken care of us, Lord. You've made a way where there seemed to be no way. God, there's folks that needs encouraged. There's folks that needs lifted up. There's folks that need strength. Lord, you're our only help. You're our only strength. You're the only victor tonight, Lord. I know the enemy standing around the walls like the people of Assyria, trying to tell the people of Hezekiah, say you're trusting the wrong God. Your God ain't no different than these other gods that we've stood before and conquered so many times. But little did they know this God is not operating. This God is not moved with the arm of flesh, but by power and strength through His Spirit. Lord, right now, I ask, Lord, for the unsaved, that you would give them courage right now to come to you. Give them courage to cry out and say, Lord, I need to be saved. Help them to get their eyes off of everything, everybody, all the excuses. But Lord, they would have one thing on their mind, is getting to the ark of, of safety. And I pray that you would give them courage to do so. For the Christians, Lord, I pray that you would help them to hold on. Help them to stay on the rock. Help them, Lord, to be found upon the rock. And know without the shadow of a doubt that they're on the rock, which is you. The Lord, meet every need as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. On the day.